this morning before we get started. First is that the UMW potato luncheon that was scheduled for this afternoon has been postponed. We will be rescheduling it and we'll let you know the date once we have that in place. If we have any graduates, we will be celebrating them in worship on May 29th. And so if you have any graduates or know of any graduates, please submit their names to the church office by the end of this week so that we can be sure to celebrate them in two weeks. 
Upper rooms for May and June are still available by both entrances of the sanctuary if you have not yet gotten yours. I am going to be out of town this weekend from the 19th to the 24th. We will be traveling out to Kansas so I can marry two of my friends. Reverend Dane Van Ace will be on call in the event of a pastoral emergency while I'm out. If there is any sort of emergency, please contact Margaret and she will be able to pass that information along to Dane. And finally, please sign the attendance pad at the end of your queue so that we know you are with us today. Most importantly, I want you to know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. As the sun rises in the morning, from the highest mountains to the deepest seas, God alone makes all things new. All grace, glory, and honor Jesus Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 560, Help Us Accept Each Other. Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. gather together from many walks of life, but we are unified as one heart in the body of Christ. In our time of worship, open our ears to hear your voice. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our minds to receive your word. Open our hearts to perceive your presence. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 393, Spirit of the Living God. just as it had 
from upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silent, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Three times. We hear Luke recount Peter's story about his interaction with Cornelius three times. It's easy to dismiss these retellings as Luke just being an incredibly thorough historian. However, when we take a deeper look, we can see that Luke is taking several opportunities to focus the hearers of this story's attention on critical moments in the narrative and to draw out some of the key implications. The version that we hear Luke recounting today is when he is retelling it to all of the circumcised believers. We hear again this horror story that Peter has been confronted with. Peter has a dream where he is instructed to partake in a feast with the Gentiles that is full of unclean animals. How can he, a good Orthodox Jew, break the law set before him in Leviticus that prohibited him from eating such unclean flesh? He is adamant that he would never never allow anything profane or unclean to enter his mouth, to touch his lips. The voice of heaven then tells him that God has made it clean, and what God has made clean must not be called profane. Peter awakens from this vision to be greeted by three men from Caesarea, to take him to the house of Cornelius so that Peter might baptize him and his entire household so that they might be saved. When the men had arrived, Peter heard the Holy Spirit tell him something that is just as powerful now as it was then. The Spirit told him to go with the men and to not make a distinction between them and us. Go, and do not make a distinction between us and them. Us and them is such a convenient phrase. We can put so much on a vague group of them. Us over here? No, we're right. We're right. We're good, but them? We can't get too close to them. Otherwise, they might make us unclean. They might contaminate us. And then where will our superiority be? Those people deserve what they have gotten because they haven't worked hard enough. They are violent. They are just beggars on the street. They shouldn't have made the decisions that got them into that situation. They knew what they were getting themselves into. How could they be considered clean or holy or worthy of salvation? In Peter's retelling of this story to the to his circumcised brothers, he never refers to Cornelius by name. 
in this retelling, Cornelius is nameless. Perhaps it's just the way Luke wrote it. Perhaps we can read a little deeper into it. It's easier to keep an us and them distinction when the them is nameless. Maybe even with this command from the heavens to stop making this distinction, it is still difficult to see them without bias. It is difficult to see someone as fully human as you, after you have spent years seeing and treating them as other than clean and human. Before Peter even shows up at Cornelius' house, God appears to Cornelius. Yes, Peter eventually arrives to share the good news of Christ, but it was not the first good news Cornelius receives from God. You see, we humans are quite fallible. We do our best to listen to and interpret what God is telling us. And God does indeed work and speak through us. But God does not limit God's self to only a third party witness. Regardless of religious affiliations, creeds, laws, God reaches out to everyone. God did not create our religion. We did that. And God continues to disrupt and interrupt the boundaries we have placed around God. Peter closes his account with a critical statement. He says, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. If God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? What a question. Who am I that I could hinder God. If the Holy Spirit can be poured on even the Gentiles, who am I to hinder God? If the work of repentance and salvation is extended even to them, who am I that I can hinder God? If us and them are no longer distinguished, who am I that I could hinder God? If God has called and made all things clean, who am I that I could hinder God? If God can move beyond the boundaries of our own religion, who am I that I could hinder God? If there is no limit to who the Holy Spirit can be poured upon, who am I that I could hinder God? This question is important. Because sometimes our actions can hinder the work God is doing in the world. When our actions are counter to the unconditional love and acceptance that Christ has exampled for us. I can't help but think about the fact that just this weekend we had two more mass shootings. One that targeted, intentionally targeted, a predominantly black supermarket where 11 of the 13 victims were black. And we are able to sit here and say, oh, well, that's them. We're not the ones who decided to go and do that. That's them. But in Christ, there is no distinction between us and them. 
and when we are unwilling to stand with them, when we are unwilling to avoid that distinction, then maybe we are them. Maybe we are no longer part of the us we thought we were. And so what does it look like for us to be intentional about getting out of our own way so that we might be able to lessen this distinction and see the transformation that is happening around us? What does it look like for us to humble ourselves and admit that sometimes religion gets it wrong? How might we surrender ourselves to God through Christ Jesus so that we might reflect more of the image of God rather than the image of God we have constructed to fit our own narratives? At the close of our service today, we will sing the hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. We will sing the words, in Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ now meets both east and west, in him meet north and south. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. We are one in Christ. We are one in the Holy Spirit. We are one in Almighty God. We are one in communion with one another. In Christ, there is no us and them. In Christ, we see beyond our differences to see the places where God cannot be hindered. And may we be willing to see that God does not wait for us to figure out our stuff before beginning the work of transformation in the world. May we be willing to join in that work regardless of when we recognize it happening around us. May we be intentional about remembering that the Holy Spirit is working through each and every person regardless of our own prejudice against them. May we get out of our own way and out of God's way and fully participate in the kingdom of God on earth. Who am I that I could hinder God? At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. for the gifts you have poured out upon each of us. We now humbly return these gifts to you so that they might be used to expand and show your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray.
this morning. First, I want to give a huge thank you to Randy and the beautiful play he just gave to us. It truly was a blessing this morning. We also want to keep Ann Paxton's family in our prayers as she passed away this past week. We also want to remember Caroline Hendricks, who has had some ongoing health problems. We also want to celebrate the roughly one million birthdays that are happening in this congregation between last week and this coming week. And so happy birthday to all who have birthdays in the, ne in the past seven days and the next seven days. Are there other joys and concerns you would like to lift up as a congregation this morning? It is a blessing to see Patsy with us today. Are there any others? Seeing them, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, God who is going on before us. God who is inviting us on the journey. We give you thanks for this day, for the ability to gather together as a community who deeply loves you and is deeply loved by you. The 
God, we come into this space aware of the hurt and violence of our world. Aware of the loss and grief and heaviness. Oh God, we have been reminded once again how delicate our lives are. Of the ways that senseless violence continues to be perpetuated. God, we pray for the families affected by that violence. The families who have lost loved ones and yet more mass shootings. The families who are nervous to go home because of the violence they may face. For the families of armed forces, both here at home and abroad. Oh God, it is easy to get so weighted down with the world around us. That it is sometimes difficult to see the places you are working and moving and transforming. Oh God, may you open our eyes to see where you are working. Open our eyes to fully see you in one another. Clear our eyes so that we not, might not be a hindrance to your love and grace. God, we give to you our entire beings. The grief, the loss, the heaviness, the hurt, and also our joy and laughter and hope. Because we know that even in the midst of our grief, there is joy. In the midst of helplessness, there is hope. In the midst of loneliness, there is community. Oh God, continue to pour your Holy Spirit upon even us that we might be strengthened to witness to your love and grace in the world and live into our calling as your beloved children. Oh God, it is as your beloved children we now pray together the prayer Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 548, In Christ There Is No East or West. Because God is moving in us and through us and around us and in spite of us. And for that, we give thanks. And so, go in peace. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Amen.